Hey, this is Sam here from Dragon Force, and you're listening to Metal Wani. Sam, how are we doing? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. Yeah, how about you? I'm doing good. What can I say about the new album? Uh, I got a copy of it and I've been listening it from, you know, from past few weeks and I really feel that this is definitely the strongest album, you know, which is there in your catalog. So thank you very much for delivering a great album. Oh, well, thanks for liking it. <laughs> now, you got to tell me this. I mean, do you guys use some sort of a formula, you know, when you guys write the solos? Because on this album, I'm blown away. Oh, cool. Um, not really, man. We're just kind of like, I mean, when we write the songs, we kind of write the, 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 the chord progressions for the solo passages mm-hmm. um, then. But like as far as otherwise, we just kind of say, OK, there's four solos on this song. I'll do the first one. You do the second one. And, and like that, we kind of if, if there's sort of certain sections that like if there's a part that I think our oh, Herman probably can play better on that. Mm-hmm. Then I can, then we'll say, OK, you play on that. But if it's like a kind of a depending on the parts, like, there's some things that we've we both got things that some of us are better at than some of that aren't. That's so, wonderful. Yeah, so we just kind of work it out to make the best result of the album, really. That's cool. And 15 tracks on the album. I mean, uh, I expect it's 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 more like a journey. I mean, uh, there's no fun listening just one or two tracks. It has to be started from the beginning till the end. So in terms of the arrangements, I feel you guys have spent quite a bit of a time on it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, that's really cool to hear you say that, though, because I always think that I think one of the something that's a bit sad these days is I'm, I, I'm sure a lot of people don't listen to an album from the beginning to the end. You know, everyone's right. always which is kind of partly what we're saying with the cover. You know, it's an overload of information. Everyone's got so many albums and so many movies and so many video games to play because yeah. everything's kind of free. Like, so that's kind of cool that you are. Uh, that, yeah, someone still likes listening to it from like a yeah, because like, I know what you mean. I think of albums like a journey almost. You know, when you Absolutely. listen to the whole thing. But yeah, I mean, as far as the arrangement, that was just kind of like we just really just write songs that we like, and and the arrangement just kind of comes out naturally. I guess it's not really. Um, I think one thing that we did slightly differently on this album was that uh, I wrote a lot of songs with Fred, the bass player. And in, in the past, I kind of wrote a lot of them, most of them, or well, most of them really, on my own. So right. having him like writing with me at the same time, mm-hmm. that kind of created a lot of new stuff because you know, he's got lots of a lot of the instrumental sections that you hear. He came up with those, and awesome. um, and he's got lots of ideas there yeah, that I don't have. So that, I think that's definitely given the album made made it sound different to the old ones. So we we didn't kind of lose anything from the old days because I'm still doing the stuff that kind of you know the stuff that I write is kind of the typical Dragon Force yeah kind of song. It has that vibe. I mean you know yeah. you can hear that sound and you can figure out okay it's sam who's playing these parts so it's pretty much evident yeah and, but then then he brought like his own stuff too so that was cool yeah yeah that's cool and because uh now this also proves the way that you guys went a bit old school on this album you know working together instead of you know sharing files you know on the internet and then you play your parts i'm gonna play mine so i kind of felt that there is a, a bond in this album you know it's been that the brotherhood among you guys to come up with such great stuff. So, you know, kudos to you guys. Oh, well, thanks, man. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, well, you're right, though. It was like that, definitely. I mean, like in the past, yeah, just me kind of sitting on my own in my bedroom with a drum machine and guitars and make some songs. But this time it was definitely a bit more like, yeah, we kind of, and it was much quicker, too, with like two guys writing the stuff, you know. Yeah, it was like, and just sort of, and it was, yeah, it was a good energy, definitely. That's wonderful. Now, what about the the Ring of Fire cover? I mean, it's very interesting. What made you guys decide to do that song in particular? Um, well, the main reason was that we we thought, well, we never did a cover before. And we So we thought, you know, like now we've been going for like 10 years. Maybe it's mm-hmm. time to do a cover, like just to you know, be kind of interesting because we never did it. Right. And, um, and we kind of, I, I always had lots of albums that I collected that had covered. Most bands, they always seem to do like a cover for a B-side or a, a bonus track or something yeah, bonus track or and something. and 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 most of the time i found that like i would always listen to it maybe once or twice and kind of go oh that's interesting but i'd never really liked it as a song you know i was just kind of oh well it's maybe hear it once is enough because it's i found that a lot of bands always play covers and they play them exactly the same as the original yeah, so I, and I, to me that's pretty boring actually so like 
So I kind of thought, well, if we're going to do a cover, I want people to like it as like the song, even if they don't know or like the original. So I kind right. of wanted them to, to wanted it to be as good as the other songs in a way. So so that's why we chose that one because it, it can't. We thought, well, like that can definitely. Well, I was listening to that song on the TV, and I thought, oh, this could be like a fast power metal song, even though it's right. like even though it's like an old 50s country stuff, I thought the melody line of the vocals and the chords and stuff, I was like, you know, this could, and even the lyrics is kind of like Ring of Fire, it's kind of like what kind of Absolutely. lyrics we would probably say anyway, you know? <laughs> like, so yeah, no, I just kind of, it was just, I thought that would that, that song would work in our style and, and hopefully people will like it even if they don't care about the original. So. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, you also, you know, have for Trivium's Matt Hiffy doing guest vocals on, I think, three of the songs. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so how did that decision come into the picture of having Matt on, you know, the album? Um, well, that was just kind of like, and we always had like screaming kind of black metal and death metal vocals on our records since Absolutely. the third album. Mm -hmm. And we always like did it ourselves or we got one of our friends to do it or, or something like that. And so this time we just, we always, we knew we wanted some more of that stuff on the, on the record. And we like, so we thought, well, let's try and get, get someone who's like a professional, you know, shouting screamer kind of guy. And, and we and we know Matt for a long time because we tour with Trivium like twice now, and we always see those guys at festivals and stuff. So we've known them for a long time, and and we just kind of he was the first one that came to mind really. Like we just like oh he could definitely do it, and it would sound cool because you know he's got a cool voice for that kind of stuff, and he can and he can sing melodically as well. So he did some harmony parts with Mark as wow. well, and um yeah, so he was just kind of the first one that came to mind. It was like it seemed kind of the perfect choice to have, and he he was really happy to do it. You know we. We weren't sure if he would want to do it because we thought, oh, he's probably just finished touring. He want to go home and have a break. But so we asked him, and uh, and and he was like, he really happy, and he was like, he even sent us more than we asked for. You know, we'd said, oh, can you do this, this, and this? And he sent back all these other ideas. He said, oh man, I really like this song. I gave you some more ideas. If you want to use them, I don't care. If you don't, that's okay too. Cool. So yeah, he he really like gave us a lot of stuff, which was cool. That's awesome. Eh? He has added his touch on this album. Uh, to some extent so that really sounds great now there's another thing about the album which i felt you guys took a step ahead was the production now jens bogren he th then words cannot define his work and fascination street studios is always the first thing which comes to musicians mind when it comes you know to produce an album so how was the journey of working with jens oh yeah it was a cool experience actually because I, I, I was a bit nervous before we went there because i thought you know we always produced our albums on our own in the past and i thought like uh, oh man, what happens if it's like turns out bad? You know, because you never really know what the result will be. Like right. we could listen, we listened to his other stuff, and we were like, yeah, he, he definitely is a great producer, but you know, will it work for us? We, we're not really sure. Well, I was like a bit worried about it because I thought, well, if it's worse, that that's going to suck. But like, um, and he he hadn't really done anything like us before that I could see in his catalog, so it was kind of like a bit of a gamble. But at the same time, you know. We thought, yeah, let's give it a try. We can't. We, we have to make a change someday. You can't just keep doing the same thing forever. And uh, and 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 luckily, it really worked out like totally well. You know, I, I'm really happy with the result. And like, I think it's cool because we haven't lost. Sometimes I don't like it when bands change production and change oh, the sound true. a bit because I think it's you know like I used to really love the Blessed of the Sick album by Morbid Angel, mm -hmm. and then they got to went to Covenant, and I didn't like the production, even though I thought the songs are really great. But I just the production kind of ruined it a bit mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. And um. So that was kind of one thing I was worried about, but like, yeah, no, I mean, I think the the result he came came back with is like really really cool. So now we're definitely happy with it, and it was just it was nice to work with someone new because you can you learn things from them too. You know? So if we if, if we wanted like you can see different. We were so so set in our ways, you know. We've been doing albums for like the last three on our own, and 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 so that was cool. And it was just nice to have some be in a new place. You know, we went to a went to Sweden, recorded in the studio there, and it was like nice countryside and stuff instead of Absolutely. like... Absolutely. So, yeah, no, it was, it was definitely a cool experience. That's great. I've seen the creator documentary of the new album, so I could figure out the the Swedish atmosphere when the you know when you guys work in Jens studio. So, it's definitely the end result has to be great. And was there any, oh, cool. any sort of, uh, you know, some elements which he guys brought into the album, given that you guys have been producing on your own, so that might have been a learning step for you as well? Yeah, well, I think one thing was that he that was pretty cool actually is he in the past we got to, because we had all the time we needed on our own you know right. when you're working in your own studio you don't have the clock running you're not paying by every hour how much mm -hmm. money so we were like we everything was so perfect almost to a kind of stupid level and on our other albums you know we played something a hundred times just because it's 
has to be everything, every okay. note perfect. Mm -hmm. And when we were with Jens, yeah, he said, he said, you know, no, that's good enough. And I'm like, no, man, I can play that better. And he's like, no, trust me, this is enough. If you play it again, maybe it's going to lose the feeling or feeling something. Right, right. Yeah, so, so, so that was cool. So in the end, we had to just kind of trust him. And we said, yeah, okay, you know what? Like, if we only have to play this twice, and you're happy with it, then it makes our life easier. Like, <laughs> and we, you know, <laughs> so we, we kind of had to, at the same time, it's quite hard to let go of that perfection kind of thing. Absolutely. I mean, it's not to say that it, it's badly played, of course, because he's still, he's still very perfectionist himself, but it just wasn't to quite such a silly level as we took it to our, on our own. Oh, so, okay. so I think that overall, that actually was good though, because it gave the album a bit more energy and life maybe. Right. So, so yeah, it was, that was cool. That's wonderful. Now, Dragon Force is about as metal as it gets. And and two of you have been, you know, are huge metalheads yourselves. But in your, you know, songwriting and in, as an inspiration, are there any non-metal guitarists out there, you know, from which you guys draw in? Um, probably not really. I think there's like, I mean, a, a lot of stuff like, I think everyone knows well that we're really into video game music. Right. I guess that's maybe the only other thing that I listen to outside metal. You know, I don't really listen to... I, mean, I listen to a lot of punk music, and I like a lot of you know, bands like NoFX. I really love them a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't know whether... I, I think everything... Obviously, the main thing is metal guitarists, I suppose. But there's, I think there's, there's definitely some parts that I've played in the past, and I'm like, oh, man, that's like a kind of NoFX stuff. Right. You know, just some small part underneath a bunch of other stuff. Nothing too obvious, but... Um, no, no, I'm not really into any other kinds of music apart from metal and rock and punk, really. So, so I oh. guess it all comes from there. I mean, we, I do like playing a lot of video game music, just like old '80s kind of 8-bit stuff. And all oh, right. And, um, and so I used, to, you know, I used to learn learn all those songs on my guitar, quite a lot of them actually. So I guess maybe some of that comes in and influence somehow. Like and a lot, some of the sort of the rhythms of like I'll play notes in a guitar solo, like some of the. I'll make up these kind of funny little rhythms like, yeah, ding, 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 <laughs> like and, and that kind of comes from, from from games, I guess. Absolutely. Now, as an award-winning band that's often praised for incredible guitar work, do you guys feel that you know there are any goals that you you know you're yet to achieve as musicians? Um, no, not really. I mean, we never really kind of set kind of goals to achieve. It was more like just playing because we enjoy it and like it's fun. You know, I think I think the the when we if we don't enjoy it, that's when we would maybe stop. But you yep. know, right now we're just really happy playing the songs. We still really love the music, and you know, we're just happy writing songs and playing them and touring around. And yeah, so I mean, we kind of write. It's not so much. Yeah, I don't, can't think of anything else I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that we've kind of been pretty lucky actually, and kind of done everything we ever well, much more than we ever expected. You know, we never expected right. to become like well-known band and everything like that we just wanted to play some gigs and have some fun so we've been like really lucky as well i think that sounds great and and when it comes to your guitar playing it's it's not just fast but it's furious as well and and when you guys when i see you playing you know in live and it's you just make it look very easy but do you ever have difficulties playing some of you know more challenging parts uh yeah definitely i mean it's every album we always try and you know we're always writing new kind of licks and stuff on for the solos and mm -hmm. And um and I find that like right now actually we I'm, I'm trying to learn the songs from the new album because you know when we're in the studio you can you're sitting down you can look at the fretboard and 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 it's easy to, easier to play but now we have to go and start touring you, know, you have to like play the same thing but you're standing up and you're running around the stage and you're right. looking at other there's other distractions so so it's quite hard to learn learn the stuff to be able to play it. I mean I can play it sitting down okay but now I have to learn it standing up and it's like kind of quite different so. Um, so that's kind of always a challenge at the start. I remember when we did the second album, we were like, "Oh man, this is so hard to play." You know, mm -hmm. now now the stuff from the second album is like really easy. Yeah. But at the time, we were like, "Oh, this is really difficult to learn." And like, so you know, we're all, I guess that means we must be improving somehow. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. It's a learning curve. So I'm glad to hear that. And yeah. when it comes to live, so what are the tracks from the album you guys are going to unleash? Because this music is meant to be played live, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, well, we're, we're, kind of, we're trying to decide at the moment, actually. We've, we've, we've got, like, um, obviously, we're going to play the first single, the game. We'll play that. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to play, uh, um, we, we've been learning the song Three Hammers. I think we're going to play that. Cool. Uh, we're going to play... Um, Tomorrow's Kings, maybe? Yeah, I, guess, I think well, I, I really like that song. That's one of my favorite uh, ones, actually. I, so I, think, too. I think we'll do that, too. And we, we, the, 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 I think those three, for sure. We're not totally... 
we, we've still got like I think we're going to probably learn about six or seven songs and, and then see how I mean, we see what happens too. Maybe the crowd can go up. Oh, this one's boring or something. <laughs> so maybe it's, hopefully not, but you never know. So yeah. some some songs always work better live than others, and you know. So we're gonna. I think we're gonna learn about six or seven and see how it goes. Oh, that sounds great. So what are the plans ahead for the rest of the year and in 2015? Uh, well, we're gonna start touring in UK and Europe in in September, and then that takes us to the end of the year. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then we just keep touring the next year too. Really, I mean, uh, we, I think we. I mean, every time we make an album, we pretty much try and cover most of the world. Absolutely. And um, so we def- just keep busy doing that. But I mean, that's that's fine. You know, that's what we enjoy doing, and that's kind of why we want to what we want to do. So it's definitely not a problem. I mean, it's quite, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of traveling and stuff. But I, you know, we all like doing it anyway. It's kind of I, if I wasn't playing in music, I'd be traveling anyway for fun. So yeah, it's pretty, that's, we're that's... pretty lucky we can do that. For, you know, part of the job. Absolutely. So that brings me to the question: Are you aware of your fan base here in India? Um, Herman said he went there and did a guitar clinic and he was like, wow, this is like amazing. He said oh, everyone was really like, really, like really happy to see him. And like, so, so I, w- I really would like to go there. I was saying to someone actually earlier today, I was doing an interview and they said, is there any way you haven't been before? And I said, yeah, man, I really want to go to India because I've never been there for mm-hmm. a holiday and I've never been there to play. Mm-hmm. And um and Herman said yeah that, that there was a lot of people really said oh man you got to go to come and play here so so I don't know I mean it's not really up to me that that's the problem so but but yeah I definitely would love to play there for sure. Uh, it'd be great to see you guys live. I don't know when is that going to happen, but uh, let's wait for it and um, it's going to be a great journey with you guys live. Yeah, well I'm hoping the same thing, man. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Now, no, I'm just going to shoot a one-off question for you. Uh, yeah, you've been you know writing music for so many years. Now, the internet has changed everything. Uh, you know, at some point of time, you know, did you, what was your first illegal download, you know, according to you? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I really can't remember, but the thing is, to be honest, I was like, I never really, I always copied tape cassettes off my friends anyway, so I guess you can say I was doing it way back then. <laughs> So, like, yeah, yeah, I was doing illegal down, illegal cassette copying back in the 80s. So, yeah, but um, that, that's how it was at that time. You know, tapes used to be shared. It wasn't basically illegal. It was just you're spreading music. But now yeah, it's well, I mean, I suppose more technic- together. But I guess technically it was not really any different. You're still getting it for free. So, I mean, people always complain about illegal downloading this, illegal downloading that. I'm like, man, that's been there's nothing actually not really that new. I, I used to never buy CDs. I didn't have enough money. So, like, you know, I, was, I always just copied it. <laughs> I that, that's wonderful. Now, let that me doesn't ask- make it right, of course. But, you know, if you're poor, you got you want to listen to some music, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> that's one good reason, actually. Now, let me end the interview on a simple question for you to define new album in just one sentence maximum overload in just one sentence um okay well i've i have said this before so i hope you didn't read it but i'm sorry i I thought it was i'm gonna say it again so i think it's uh everything you could ever possibly want on a metal record there we go so it's got everything whatever fans want it has it's got speed it's got melody it's got heaviness it's got lightness it's got you know i really think it's got I mean, of course, not everyone's going to like it, but to me, at least, I think that's it's every single style of, that I really love combined into one thing. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for spending some time. It was an honor having a chat with you. I look forward to see you guys in live in future, and I you know, just can't wait for it. Yeah, I really hope so, man. Definitely. But that's good to talk to you. Cheers for, like, cheers for doing the interview. Thank you so much.